Last time we met, we discussed how Tokyo Union Church intentionally crafted a plan to create a community church, a community church that was a community that was intended to serve a diverse group of English-speaking Christians. As we know, it did eventually reach its aspirations to be a community for all, for those English-speaking who are from the West and those who are not from the West. It took a couple of decades to reach there, but it did eventually become a community open to all. And today we will look into how our church decided to expand, expand going beyond central Tokyo and moving westward. Why did it decide to do to move westward? How did they decide to move westward? And what do we think about expansion today? This is what we will be looking into in today's The Past Informing the Future. If you could all, for a brief moment, just imagine it is the 1960s and we are in Tokyo Union Church. And during this period of time, we are experiencing an unusual expansion. We were still under the leadership of Reverend Howard Haynes, our former protagonist who argued to the elders to accept a Japanese student as a full member of the church without being an associate member of a Japanese church. Sunday worship at this time has, has now grown to three services each Sunday, and the sanctuary frequently was full to overflowing. The enrolled membership at the time was um, around 350 and climbing. Tokyo was expanding. And the foreign community was also expanding. And they too were itching to have more space. As our history, our book, A Church for All Season, points out, quote, the foreign community was wanting to have more living space, more living space than they found deep in central Tokyo or in one of its inner layer suburbs. Residential areas emerged in the west, away from Tokyo Bay and its smoggy littoral. End quote. Hemphill says that although togetherness was still highly to be desired, but on a more selective basis than before, there was just too much of it in central Tokyo. So people were looking for more space. They were looking to go beyond. So they looked westward. How did TUC react with this westward expansion? Well, you might have guessed rightly if you would have said, create a committee. And that's exactly what TUC did. They created a committee. And in this time, the committee was called the Long Range Planning Committee. This committee met regularly, but most what but what most drove our westward expansion were forces outside of the TUC organization. And one of those was the American School in Japan. ASIJ, a long-time institutional friend of Tokyo Union Church, all the way to its origins. ASIJ was already outgrowing its Nakameguro facilities, and it was looking west for greener fields, for bigger area. And ASIJ decidedly to, decided to relocate in 1962, and that is what caused the flow of westward expansion. Several Union Church families were already living in the Mitaka Chofu Futsu vicinity, uh, and it was a growing area for West Tokyo. And it began to look into ways of meeting their church needs and responsibilities locally, far away from 
the downtown location of Tokyo Union Church. Slowly, the community that inhabited West Tokyo developed a West Tokyo living experience. One of the members of the church coined a new social doctrine of sorts, dubbed the McDonald's Law as Church for All Seasons writes, in honor of Ian McDonald, who first isolated and identified the West Tokyo experience, who first said, the longer one lives in West Tokyo, the less attractive becomes the prospects of traveling into Tokyo if there is a reasonable alternative. By 1963, there were serious conversations by TUC members for all the people who were living in West Tokyo to start a Christian community. By 1964, this TUC group agreed with the International Christian University that was already in West Tokyo to establish a jointly operated Sunday school and to proceed each week with a brief worship service which both the members of the ICU community and West Tokyo Union Church community might attend. The service was first led by Reverend Lloyd Nev, a, a Lutheran missionary and faculty at the Lutheran Theological Seminary. West Tokyo Union Church community had an average attendance about 50 adults and children. And that was to be the case for the first couple of years. While this group started to meet regularly, WTUC met the perennial problem of its identity. Just what were they in West Tokyo? Were they a group, a congregation, a pioneer church, a branch of the main church? a informal collection of usually like-minded neighbors. Well, again, Tech Union Church Committee concluded the following. These are the four principles to be observed in nurturing the inter-congregational relationship between Tokyo Union Church and West Tokyo Union Church. One. West Tokyo Union Church is a part of Tokyo Union Church and membership in either congregation constitutes membership in Tokyo Union Church. Two, Tokyo Union Church professional staff has pastoral responsibilities to West Tokyo Union Church and should officiate there at one worship service a month. Three, West Tokyo Union Church should have membership on Tokyo Union Church's boards of stewards and elders on a certain or other governing bodies. Four, financial programs should be unified in the annual Tokyo Union Church budget until other arrangements are required. With a couple of years passing, there still seemed to be the question of what was Tokyo Union Church really? Because by 1968, Tokyo Union Church created another committee to understand the relationship between Tokyo Union Church and West Tokyo Union Church. And it was known as the Ford Report, humbly named after the chairman, Mr. Ford. The report stated, that West Tokyo Union Church had matured perceptively as a worshiping entity during the brief years, even though it had not grown in numbers as has been anticipated. It had adopted a steering committee as its form of government, and this had received the blessing of the church council in January of 68, when it recognized the West Tokyo Church as a branch organization of Tokyo Union Church, period. And that was the Ford Report. But by the end of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s, there seemed to be already a change of heart. Because by 1971, a study, this time made by a committee of three West Tokyoites, 
which included Robert Temple, the person who wrote A Church for All Seasons, their study and their committee analyzed the options for future relationships between the two separate organizations. And their findings were summarized this way. One, West Tokyo Union Church moves toward a phased withdrawal from Tokyo Union Church, keeping alive the option to return if plans don't work out. Two, eight areas of need further study before phase withdrawal can proceed. One, legal relationships. Two, ultimate use of Tokyo Union Church's land in West Tokyo. Three, pastoral support. Four, finances. Five, programs. Six, administrative support. Seven, organizations. And eight, benevolence and outreach goals. Their third point was as to Tokyo Union Church constitutionally, nominally applicable to West Tokyo Union Church, develop withdrawal plans but do nothing to disturb the relationship between the two churches, obtaining the understanding of the Tokyo Union Church congregation, which is the ultimate interpreter of the constitution that the move toward autonomy was occasionally results in extra constitutional situations. And four, provide the kind of organization West Tokyo Union Church needs to continue its movement towards autonomy. Perhaps as a tangible endor endorsement of such confidence was found in January of 1972, where the Tokyo Union Church elders in delegation of authority without local president, empowered West Tokyo Union Church to accept and receive new members without prior consultation to the downtown church. For its part, the West Tokyo group was beginning to explore the practical aspects of the eight specific areas which it needed to traverse on the way to autonomy. Thus, Hempel writes, in the centennial year of Tokyo Union Church and its younger fraternal associate were now embarked on an extended venture in faith, not unlike that begun in Skiji a short century before. Unquote. West Tokyo Union Church eventually became its own independent church, and TUC maintained its relationship throughout the years. Even the aforementioned Reverend Howard Haynes became a summer pastor at WTUC during the summer of 1980. And Tokyo Union Church <clears throat> was listening to its members. This is how West Tokyo Union Church was formed. It was formed from the bottom up. TUC leadership was hearing the spirit and was hearing and answering the call of a westward expansion. So where is T W T U C now? Well, they are still meeting regularly on Zoom and once a week in person in West Tokyo. They are currently not with a pastor, but their members are taking regular leadership roles, and they have invited many people to preach on Sundays. However, the story of church expansion does not end there. In the August of 2022, the Union Church Network was formed. Well, what am I say? What is the Union Church Network exactly? Well, there are five Union Churches in the country of Japan. They are all diverse in history and diverse in their communities with members from many denominations and nationalities. The Union Church Network is a natural expansion of the Union Churches. And the Union Churches of Japan are Kobe, Nagoya, Tokyo, West Tokyo, and Yokohama. And the Union Church Network came out of a post-COVID. It is where 
these five union churches can share their online offerings with one another. It is a place where any member of any of the UCN can join any of the other union churches' offerings. This is, was co-developed and created by yours truly, Pastor Hector of Tokyo Union Church, and led by, inspired by, the pastor, the lead pastor at Kobe Union Church, Pastor Claudia, who served for many, many years as the pastor at West Tokyo Union Church. Our hope here with the UCN is that our communities continue to connect, continue to expand God's mission in Japan by sharing the resources that we all have. We hope that you are able to attend one of our UCN offerings, whether it be from attending a class from Kobe or one of our own. We are delighted that we have created a new network, a new expansion, new bridges being created in the midst of COVID-19. Thank you for your time.